This is, in my opinion, this is the most important skill that you can master once you have mastered getting on the appointment. If you master getting on the appointment, being able to have a great kitchen table is gonna make you or break you here, okay? So there's a process that you need to learn how to follow. Now listen, I've had reasonable results in my Primerica career. Most of you would agree with that, okay? And so what I'm teaching you is exactly what I do, exactly what I've taught other people to do. Okay, so here's where most people go wrong with something like this. As they listen to this once or twice, they say, uh-huh, okay, I understand. And they, they get a basic gist of it. And then they go and try to do it. And there's nothing wrong with that. And you might even be able to get some results with that if you've got a great market, if you're really persuasive. But you're not going to be able to duplicate it. Right, okay, and so when you're duplicating keys, when you're making copies of keys, if you make a duplicate of a duplicate of a duplicate, pretty soon the key doesn't work anymore because you're losing a little bit of it. So you've gotta make sure that you learn how to do this exactly. And so this is gonna be in what I consider to be excruciating detail. I'm an A-type person. I'm like, all right, you got it, great, let's go. But I've put this down in excruciating detail so that you get every nuance, every, every tonality, every question, and your job, your job, your goal is to be able to do this exactly like I do it. Now, for time's sake tonight, we're probably not actually gonna do the KT beginning to end uninterrupted. That's on YouTube, you can find it, it's also on SoundCloud. What I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna take you piece by piece and explain to you why and what so that you get the component pieces and all you're gonna have to do is piece them together, you understand? But every piece of this is here for a reason, okay? And so when you don't understand something well enough to understand, see, every action has an equal and opposite what? Reaction. And so there are things that I built into this after sitting at literally thousands of kitchen tables over my career here that, that built in answer objections, that built in answer people rescheduling, right? So there's a process to this that you wanna make sure that you get exactly, if you get it exactly and you can get yourself in front of some human beings, you're gonna have great results because you understand the process, okay? So we're gonna go through this really, really quick. Our business is built at the kitchen table, y'all. It's built at the kitchen table. See, a lot of people think that recruiting and kitchen tables are two different things, but I never saw them that way. I always looked at, if I could be on kitchen tables only, that's what I would rather be on. And I'll recruit the client at the end of the kitchen table, which I'm gonna teach you, right, okay? So if I'm recruiting clients, clients are, are friends with, they're related to other people that would be good clients, right? Do you understand that? Versus running around prospecting people at the mall that aren't potential clients, right? And they know other people that aren't potential clients. So our business is built at the kitchen table. Mastering the KT is what will allow you to get results and stay in the business while you build the business. Art Williams always said, you've got to stay in business long enough to build the business. What did he mean by that? You've got to learn how to be able to make sales across the kitchen table while you're recruiting and training other people. If you get great at this, you'll always make money. If you always make money, you can stay here long enough to find other people that will build with you, right? But if you're out there running your shopping cart into people at mid midnight at Meyer trying to recruit them, oops, I ran into you. By the way, you seem like a pretty sharp guy. You keep your options up, okay? You're not gonna be able to sustain yourself like that if you're not making sales to people that are in our market, okay? So remember, listen, what we do is right 100% of the time. Without us, there is absolutely no hope for the average American financially. And you've got to stop and understand that for a second. We're never going to ask somebody across that kitchen table to do something that's not in their best interest. Zero times will we ever ask somebody across that kitchen table to do something that does not put their family in a better position having done business with us. What we do is right 100% of the time. Our concept, buy term, invest the difference, get out of debt, is the right concept. I don't care how much money you have. In what world is it good to not have money saved and have buttloads of debt and have way too little life insurance for way too much money? It doesn't exist, right? But see, a lot of people, right, the, the industry sells on elitism. How many of you ever met somebody who has a cash value policy, but they tell you, but it's not like the rest of it, it's special, right, okay? They, well, you're pretty special if you bought that, okay? Right, because, because that's how it's sold to people. Well, you're different, you're a doctor, you're not like the common folk. Well, money works the same way whether you have a lot of it or you have a little of it, it's inanimate. 
It doesn't make its own choices. You understand that? <laughs> it works in the same way. And so you got to understand when we're across the kitchen table, you got to be willing to go to war with those people for their own best interest. Because listen, if you leave them to make their own choices, what have their financial choices done for them so far in life? And the answer is most of the time, not a whole heck of a lot. So if you don't help them to move forward with a plan for debt, freedom, term insurance, and mutual funds, they're not going to move forward. Okay, so we don't get paid to visit. We get paid to help people take what? Take action. Okay, so listen, number one thing on the kitchen table is you've got to walk in there and you've got to be 100% assumptive. People want and need what we do. People want and need what we do. So many of you, you go in to a kitchen table and you're nervous. What are you nervous about? Who doesn't want to get out of debt? Who doesn't care about their family if something happens to them? Right? You're like, well, I know one I'm related to him is my cousin. Right? Okay. But there, you probably know one or two. But most people, okay, want and need what we do, okay, and they need you to put together a roadmap for success because their roadmap has gotten them nowhere. Okay? So understand who has the goods here. You are, they need you way more than you need them, okay? There are five million people around here, right? It's you spend the rest of your life working seven days a week, you'll never put a dent in that. They need you far more than you need them. So here's the goals at the kitchen table. The number one goal is to set the financial needs analysis. Set the financial needs analysis. That is the number one goal of the kitchen table is when you leave the kitchen table, the first sit down, you have a go back schedule to do a financial needs analysis. Folks, I know some of your uplines don't do a lot of needs analysis. I think that's a mistake. I think you need to come back because you're missing a lot of opportunities, namely in the investment business and in the referral and recruiting the client business, okay? Right, so that's our value add. So number one is we're getting an F&A, so we're getting solid commitments, I'll talk about that. The second objective of that kitchen table appointment is to do what? To close life, to take a life insurance application that first time. Listen, we are first sit closers. What does that mean? If it makes sense for them, and virtually always it does, unless they're uninsurable. If it makes sense for them, they're there, you're there, it's in their best interest, then let's move forward. Because putting it off till next time, there's no reason to do that. You don't benefit, I don't benefit. Why would we put off till tomorrow what we could do today if we're all in agreement that it's the right thing, okay? So the second thing is to close life, and the third thing is to set the stage for the what? For the recruit. Guys, listen, recruiting is the lifeblood of our business, but most of you are just so happy to go in and be making a sale. You walk out, you don't even talk to them. You know how many of your people I have recruited showing up after you've sold them something, and they're like, they didn't even tell me about this, right? Okay, dozens and dozens of times I showed up on appointments with people who are clients of peep agents in my hierarchy, and they said they never even talked to me about the business, right? So we've gotta always be setting the stage for the recruit. So those are our three goals. Number one, get the F&A booked. Booked, time, date, place, booked. Not, well we talked about the F&A, I'm gonna call next week to set it up. Why, if you're there and they're there, why would you leave to then set an appointment with them? That doesn't make any sense, right? Okay, so here's the process of the KT. I'm a very linear thinker, right? Do A, B, C, D, E, check it off. Checklist, right? So number one is form and building rapport. Family, occupation, recreation, motivation. We'll go through that in a minute. Number two is what do you know about Primerica? Okay, because listen, most people don't know anything about Primerica. Why? We don't advertise. We're the advertisement. So most people know nothing. Some people know some. If they're well educated about us, they like our company, they're, they're familiar with our stock, doing extremely well, etc. And every once in a while, you meet somebody who's like, oh, Primerica, my cousin's brother's dog did that once, and he didn't make any money. I'm like, well, he was a dog, he couldn't get licensed, right, okay, so, you know, right? But, but so you need to figure that out. What do they know so that you start at neutral or positive, okay? Number three is we have two jobs in Primerica, educating families, bringing on agents, right? And we're gonna talk about these more in detail, Number four is set the needs analysis. Okay, so that's step four. Step five is getting into the life insurance discussion. Little, little sidebar here. 
on Primerica Online under training. If you go to the training tab, the first thing you see pop up is a big old picture of me <laughs> sitting at a kitchen table, okay? And that's the life discussion. Every variance that you're possibly gonna see at a kitchen table is in that hour long video. Everything to say, everything to write, okay? There's only five things that could happen. They don't have life insurance and they're single, which you probably didn't get to the kitchen table. It's a recruiting appointment, but it's on there anyways. They don't have life insurance and they have mar they're married or have kids. They have only group insurance. They have permanent insurance. So they have other terms. There's the only five possible scenarios, right? So that video talks about Kayla's dropping a... Sorry, sorry, sir. Don't look. Don't, don't. Don't look. <laughs> okay. Well, it's now videoed for everybody to see. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you, That's Kayla. So don't airdrop me anything, y'all, okay? So number five, right, the life discussion. Number six is the recruiting question. And we're gonna get to each piece of this. Some of you are good, good little guilty smirks on your face. Again. It wasn't anything bad. Okay, so let's talk about form real quick and then we'll get into this. So form, family, occupation, recreation, motivation. This is building rapport. People wanna do business with people they know, like, and trust. Okay, no like and trust, all things being equal. All things not being equal, people generally would still rather do business with somebody they know, like, and trust. Okay, so you've gotta be great at building rapport. How long should that form take? Two to three minutes tops. If you're in there talking to them about their, their cats and where their cat went to boarding school, okay, and, and 15 minutes has gone by, that client, no matter how cordial they are, they're thinking, when's this gonna get on with it? Some of you run two hour kitchen table appointments. I pray for the souls of your clients, okay? Because you're like stealing their soul away from them on the kitchen table appointments, like literally being sucked from their body as you talk, okay? So the kitchen table appointment should take 15 minutes to get the F&A booked and get into the life discussion. Tops, if you're talking longer than that, you're talking too much, okay? Let me teach you a great phrase. Don't sell past the close. Okay, don't sell past the close. Some of you are information dumpers and you're so fired up about all that we stand for and our crusade and it's incredible and all this and the client's like glazing over on you, not because they don't care, but because they have half, they don't know what you're talking about, right? Because you know what you're talking about, but they don't. So follow the process, family, occupation, recreation, motivation, right? Ask some questions, two to three minutes tops, okay? Everybody following that? Yeah. Great, so let's go into, right? I work with a company called Primerica. Have you ever heard of Primerica? Okay, so simple. And they're gonna say what? Yes or no. If they say no, here's how you respond to that. Let me see if I have this here. Okay. If they say no, then here's what you say to them. You say, that's totally normal. Generally, you wouldn't have heard of us unless you know somebody that works with us. We don't advertise. But perhaps you've heard of a company called Citigroup for 20 years. We were essentially Citigroup's advisor, Citibank, City Mortgage, City Financial. You've heard of them, right? Okay. We went public six years ago. We're a standalone company, but that's totally normal. If they say yes, I say, great. How have you heard of us? And I let them talk. Well, how, how many of you ever had a client say, well, I see advertisements for them? I'm like, oh, sure. Okay, great. I just agree with them, right? I don't say, well, I'm doing Bozo. We don't have advertisements. Okay. So you don't argue with them. You say, okay, right? But what I really want to know is, are you, are you neutral? Are you positive? If somebody told you something negative, if they told, if they have something negative to say, I deal with that right there. I do not move further until I've got that done. So, so, oh, my cousin did that. Well, Matt, do you know, did your cousin ever get licensed? Well, I don't really know. Well, do, do you know if he had a great trainer? Well, I don't really know. Okay, well, you know, they have to get licensed. They probably need to learn what they're doing. Did he do it for a really long time? No. Well, like most things in life, you want to be successful. You don't do it for three months, right? Okay, great. So it sounds like maybe your cousin wasn't working with the right guy. Maybe he didn't have the right experience or anything. But, you know, that's not going to be this way at all because I'm a professional. I love what I do. I've been doing this for so long. If you're brand new, right, you say, you know what? My mentors have been doing this for so long. It's a great company, and you just reassure them and you take them back to neutral. Everybody understand that? Okay, so let's recap at the beginning of the appointment. So when you get to the, the F&A, when you get to the, kit, the kitchen table, what you're saying to them, so I'm with Shane and Melissa, right? So, and, and I'm training Logan. So I'm talking to them and I say, hey, Shane and Melissa, thanks for having us. Uh, and I'm sure Logan had told you why we were coming over. He's getting some training. He needs to learn a little bit, right? But 
So listen, I, you know, I'd love to share with you a little bit about what we're doing, how we help people. May or may not be interesting to you or, or something you could use, but I definitely want you to hear a little bit about it. It's all right if I take a few minutes of your time and chat with you about it, right, okay? And so the first thing I do then is I go here. So I, I work with a company called Primerica. Have you ever heard of Primerica before? Yes or no, we address it, right? Next step, at Primerica we have two jobs, okay? So this is the second page, the inside page of the Company of Destiny brochure. It's available in Download Center on Primerica Online for free, okay? And so I have this on the table. It, you could do this without this for sure all day long, except for one thing in, in the book Skill with People, Les Giblin says people retain 90% of what they see and hear. And if you remove C, the retention rate goes down a ton. So I have it, it's literally a prop. Right, so they can point to things on it so that they retain what I'm saying to them better. To say at Primerica, Jordan, we have two jobs. One job is we help people get educated about money and we teach them some concepts, Jordan, I'm pointing, that help them to do things like get out of debt earlier, pay less for taxes, pay less for insurance, save money for things like <laughs> retirement, kids' college education, starting a business. It's actually a phenomenal thing. We do that, Jordan through a tool called the Financial Needs Analysis. We call it an FNA, and and basically, Jordan, what that is, is that's a written plan that shows people where they are, helps them to figure out where they wanna be, and then teaches them how to get from where they are to where they wanna be more efficiently using the same money that they're already using, okay? Think about it kind of like a financial GPS, so to speak. So like, Jordan, if you were gonna take a trip from Detroit to LA, you are gonna take a road trip, you're gonna drive there, you would probably put it in maps, right, okay? Or if you were old school, you'd take a Rand McNally, right? But you wouldn't just drive west, right? Why not? Yeah, well, you might get there, right, if you were good at following signs, but you're probably not gonna get there as fast as possible. You're not gonna know about detours, et cetera, right, okay? So everybody taking a long road trip would definitely map it out, right, okay? Fastest way from point A to point B. So it's complete common sense, but ironically, Jordan, most people in the United States don't apply that same common sense to their finances, right? So they have no plan, they, they're just kind of winging it, they're doing the best they can, they got a 401k at work, some insurance through work, they got insurance over here, and they're just kind of doing the best they can with what they know, does that make sense, Jordan? Yeah. Okay, so Jordan, just like having a, a plan or a map to get from here to LA, wouldn't it make sense that having a plan generally is better than not having a plan, right? You'd agree with that, right? So Jordan, let me ask you a question out of curiosity. Do you have a written plan that details all those things for your finances, or do you feel like you're really like most people, you're just trying to do the best you can with what you have and make it work? Well, I was like most people, but I got a great job now. I'm okay. working with Primerica. Oh, so. great. <laughs> Who's your up like? No, no. Sorry, so, but they're generally gonna say what? One of two things. Right. I don't have a plan, and I agree having a plan makes sense, or I do have a written plan from an advisor, which is virtually never, virtually never. So that's called a tie down right there. I'm tying him down. Would, Jordan, would you agree that having a plan in general is better than not having a plan? If he says yes to that, and then I offer him a plan and he says no thanks, that, that doesn't line up. That's called the principle of congruency. People want to be seen as congruent with what they say, think, and believe. So if they say that it's better to have a plan than not have a plan, it's very hard for them to then go back against what they just told you. Yes, it is better to have a plan, but I don't want to have a plan. Does that make sense? Okay, so that's a, a, a very subtle tie down. Okay, so I'm going to take you through this. So this is exactly what I just said in writing. Okay, one job is we help people to become educated about how many works. Does this sound familiar? Did you just see me do this, right? Okay, we teach them some concepts that will help them pay less for debt, less for taxes, less for insurance, right? Help them to free up money to save for things like kids' college, retirement, starting a business, okay? You can throw this tidbit in here. We actually have 50,000 families a month right now switching their finances to us company-wide, okay? So, straight up verbatim, word for word, you're explaining job number one. So take a picture of it, okay? So again, this goes with this sheet, and you just straight up, as you're going to get out of debt, you're pointing to get out of debt, right? So you say it and point to it. Why? 
because they retain more of what you're showing and saying than if you're just saying it to them, okay? So we do this by taking clients through a process called a financial needs analysis. Basically, the needs analysis looks at where you are now, where you wanna be, right? And how to use the money you already have to get from point A to point B faster. Think about it like a GPS. If you're going to take a road trip from here to LA, you, you all sound familiar, okay? So you're, uh, you're, you probably use a GPS. If you're old school, you'd at least take a long Rand McNally, but you probably wouldn't just start driving west, right? Right, okay, you could do that, but if you got there at all, it'd be slowly with a lot of detours along the way, okay? So most people have a plan when it comes to a three-day road trip, but generally don't have a plan when it comes to their money and their financial future. So out of curiosity, do you have a written game plan, okay, for your finances, or are you just doing what you can and managing it as you go? Okay, so that's the exact process we just went through in writing. What's the point of all that? You wanna explain something that's maybe a little complex, financial planning, in the terms of something that people understand, which is a GPS, and then you wanna tie them down that generally people don't use the same planning with their finances. Wouldn't it make sense that having a plan is better than not having a plan? Yes, out of curiosity. Do you have a written plan that does all those things, or are you just doing the best you can with what you have like most people? Okay, and they're gonna answer one of those two things. If you could have a plan, okay, if you could have a plan, having a plan would be better than not having a plan. Would you agree? That's a tie down, okay? Would you also say that kind of trying to expose their their fears, like in when you're when you're trying to got like doing a recruiting appointment, you're trying to do, what do you hate about what you do? Well, that would happen in form. So this is, this is I'm just trying to find out: Do you have a plan? Most people do not have a plan, and I'm just selling you on logic here. Having a plan is better than not having a plan. Wouldn't you agree? If you were able to have a plan, Rob, you would want to have a plan versus not having. Right? Great. Because that's what I'm about to offer him is what? A plan. Okay? So here's here's the transition. So he agrees and say, great, Rob, listen, I want to set a time to come back and take you through a financial needs analysis. The average financial planner Rob charges about a thousand bucks according to consumer reports that do a written plan, okay, that doesn't just cover, you know, like, hey, spend less, save more, we all know that, but exactly what to do, right? Okay with recommendations, we're gonna do it for a price nobody bickers about, Rob, we're gonna do it for free, okay? Because we do it for free, so here's where we're getting the tie downs, okay? We're gonna do it for free. So these are the tie down commitments. Because we're gonna do this for free, I'm gonna ask you for two things in return, Rob. The first is when I come back, and you can look at me, now watch this, I'm gonna lower the tone of my voice, I'm gonna slow it down a little bit, I wanna make crystal clear Rob gets this, okay? So Rob, listen, when I come back and I'm sitting at your kitchen table and you can look at me and you can say, Ian, this was really good. This was very beneficial. I got a lot of great information out of this. Rob, I'm gonna ask that you would be willing and able to refer me to five to 10 people that are married, have kids, have a home, and have a job that may benefit, Rob, from the same free financial information that you found value in. Okay, now Rob, listen, when I come back, right, if, if it's not better, if you look at me and say, hey, you know what, I already knew this, you're really pushy, your breath smelled bad, whatever, if it wasn't great, I'm not gonna ask you for the referrals. Is that fair? Okay, great. So I'm telling them exactly what I want, exactly the parameters that I expect to, to do this in, and I give him an out. If it's not good, I wouldn't expect that of you. Is that fair? Right, okay, that's a tie down. That's an agreement. Listen, sales is a commitment business. The sale of referrals was made when? Right there, not when I'm asking them for them down the road, right there. If you go on a lot of kitchen tables and people are not buying and giving you referrals, what are you missing? You're not getting commitments. You're breezing by the commitment to just try to get into it. But if there's not an if then, then there's no commitment, right? So listen, when I come back, if you can look at me across your kitchen table and tell me, Ian, this was great, I'm really glad we did this, I'm gonna ask that you would be willing and able to refer me to five to 10 people who are married, have kids, have a home and have a job that may benefit from some of the same free information that I gave you. Would you be okay with that? Yes. Now great, if when I come back you say I already knew this, you were really pushy, your breath smelled bad, 
all right, I won't ask you for any referrals. Is that fair? That's an if then. So that's my verbal contract with them right there. So that's number one. The second thing that I'm going to ask you, Rob, is this. When I come back and I put together a plan that does help you pay off your debt faster, it does help you better insure your family, it does help you save more or at least more efficiently than you're saving now for retirement, and Rob, it costs you the same or less per month than you're paying right now to do these financial <laughs> things, I'm going to ask that you would move forward with the recommendations that I'm making, okay? Now, Rob, when I come back, if it's not better, if you're like, hey, you know what? It was more expensive. It didn't make any sense. I would not ask you to move forward. Are you okay with that, Rob? So what have I asked for commitments on? Referrals and what? Moving forward with my recommendations. Okay? You will never get I want to think about it on a kitchen table ever again if you do these two commitments with people. Okay? And if you don't do these commitments, you're going to get run around like a maniac because nobody wants to make a commitment when the lines aren't defined. So what have I done here? I put the, the parameters of how we're going to operate and how this relationship is going to go. I've clearly defined them. I've defined my role and I've defined your role and I've defined each other's expectations of those roles. Everybody follow on that? Okay. Very good. So. That's the, the out, right? So great. If when I come back, it's not better. I won't ask you to move forward with anything. Is that fair? Okay. So listen to this. Uh, when you're talking about what, you're, what they're going to need, okay, uh, you say this. There are two things I'd like to pick up today. So here's how you traverse into the life insurance conversation. Okay. So you've gotten the, the agreement for the financial needs analysis. At this point, what I would do is I would say, great, let's get our calendars. Let's set that up for for later this week, next week. So I get the agreement, the commitments, we book the appointment right then and there, okay? So once we book the appointment, I would say, great, Josh, Kayla, listen, here's, we're gonna need a number of things from you, right? Debt statements, insurance paperwork, uh, any statements you have for retirement accounts, but there's two things that I would really like to take a look at today, if that's okay with you, if they're easy to find. One is statements for any like retirement accounts. Do you have any IRAs, any 401ks, anything like that? Right? And it's, the answer is what? Yes or no? If yes, say great. I want to take a statement with me so I can start doing a little research so that when I come back, I've got some information for you. I'm not seeing it for the first time. Josh? How far out do you set the FNA drug? Like as soon as possible. Okay. So within a week. The further out it goes, the less likely it is to happen. Okay? So you try to book it as quickly as possible. Okay? So I want to pick that up. The second thing that I'd like to take a look at today, potentially even take with me, is your life insurance policy. So who does your life insurance? That's how you get into the life insurance discussion. And then they're going to say, what? One of the five things we talk about. I have no life insurance, but they're not married with kids. I have no life insurance. They are married with kids. I have group insurance. I have term insurance. I have permanent insurance. There's only one of those five conversations. That, from this point forward on the life discussion, is all on POL, okay? Great, so you set the needs analysis for three to seven days away, and you post-close the analysis by encouraging the client. Okay, so here's what you're gonna find. Remember, people who are making poor financial decisions are probably going to continue making poor financial decisions if left to their own decision-making ability. All right, okay, an object in motion stays in motion unless acted on by an outside force, right? Okay, so you're the outside force. So here's the tendency, you set the FNA, and if you don't post close the FNA, the FNA will unschedule 50 to 70 percent of the time. Why? Because when you were there and you were speaking common sense to them, they agreed. When you left and the common sense person left, then they go back to their own thinking, which is like, why would I need a plan? I like being in debt and not having any money, right? Okay. <laughs> and so then they do things like text you and say, hey, you know what? I've been thinking. If you were thinking, you would have called me a long time ago. You're definitely not thinking, right? Okay. So, but, but you're on default robot mode, right? Broke robot mode. Like, let's make bad financial decisions again. Call advisor and cancel financial plan, right? Okay. So, so if you don't post close it, you're going to get a lot of that. So how do you post close it? So Shane and Melissa, we set the F and A. We've started talking about the life insurance, right? So here's what I do with the, with the post close. As soon as I book it, I say, Shane and Melissa, listen, you guys are going to be so happy that we did this. You're going to be so much further ahead 
then all of your friends, all your peer group, most of the people you work with, none of them are gonna take time to plan like you guys are, right? And if you don't, if you fail to plan, you do what? You plan to fail, right, okay? So I just want you to know you're gonna be so happy and so proud of yourself that you did it. And everybody that you know is gonna be like, wow, look at these guys, look how far ahead they are, right? And that's valuable. So I just put a little bit of positive peer pressure, like, hey, you're gonna be way cooler than all of your friends. Because when their <laughs> friend's like, hey, well, I don't think you need to do that, right, okay? And they're like thinking, that's exactly what he told me. I'm way better than this guy, right? It's exactly, it's exactly what I wanna have happening to them mentally when they face opposition, because they're gonna talk to somebody, mm -hmm. right? Okay, and broke folk like to talk to other broke folk about career and financial advice. Have you ever, lived, have you ever realized that? Okay, they're all like leading each other in this circle, right, in the wilderness for 40 years. Right, okay, just walking around like, I don't know what's happening here, right, okay? Right, so listen, you gotta prepare them to make the right choice and you gotta prepare them a little bit that people might say negative things. Now, I don't ever say that. You don't ever plant negative thoughts in clients' minds. Now, if somebody says something negative, no, 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 no. I use positive reinforcement. Listen, you are so smart, you're so much further ahead than all these other people who aren't gonna take the time, they don't have their craft together, but you guys are putting it together and you're gonna be so thankful you did because you're gonna be miles ahead of these people down the road, right? I wanna give them a, 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 a value gap so that if somebody says something negative, they think about it from a positive frame of mind, not a, not a, a negative frame of mind, right? You all understand that? Okay, very good. <laughs> So I'm saying to them, right, listen, so I wanna pick up two things. One is any statements you have for current or former 401Ks, IRAs, anything like that. Do you have any retirement accounts? And they're gonna say yes or no. If they say no, we'll say, well, we'll talk about that when we get back together because saving is obviously very important. If they do, you say, great, is it, a, is it an old account or is it with a current employer? What are you looking for? Rollover money, right? Now listen, if you're not securities licensed, you really cannot talk very much further about that. But here's what you can do. You can do what? Pick up the statements and bring them to the office with somebody who is securities licensed, okay? Why? Because listen, here's how money works. If there's a lot of it, it's not gonna be there for a long time. Somebody's gonna find it, right? Do you understand? <laughs> there are lists generated for sale. Anytime there's a financial transaction more than $10,000, it gets recorded. It's a Patriot Act, right? And, so, and companies buy these lists. Trust me, if there's a chunk of money there, they're on somebody's call list who's trying to get that money. So you'd be way better off bringing the statements, taking them to your RVP, saying, who do you want me to go with? And going with a securities licensed person and getting the assets. And once you get licensed, you can go back to the client and they can sign the assets over to you, okay? This is not how insurance works, but that's how securities works, okay? you would be foolish to try to hoard those for yourself mm -hmm. down the road because they ain't gonna be there in six months when you get licensed, I promise, the money's moved. It's somewhere else, okay? If there's any considerable amount of it at all, it's going somewhere else. So you pick up the statements, if you're not on securities license, you always get the statement, always. And you bring it back and let somebody here look at it and tell you, hey, I think there's an opportunity here or there's no opportunity here, okay? So you always pick up the statement, right, <coughs> okay? The other thing is your life insurance policy. Who do you do that with right now? That's the easiest way you get into the life insurance discussion, all right? So then you follow the life insurance process and you take the out. And so we'll talk about that next week, but if you don't wanna wait till next week, you can go on POL and you can watch that video that shows you everything in the process. So pick up the investment statements, bring it to your trainer, okay? And now you ask the recruiting question. So here's the million dollar question. Most of you won't do this. Okay, so Mr. and Mrs. Client, listen, I'd be remiss to not at least ask you, okay, but on a scale of one to 10, one being I hate helping people, I also hate making money, 10 being if I could make a few thousand bucks a month uh, working a few hours a week helping people, I would be interested. Where do you place yourself on that scale based on our initial meeting? So let me say that again. So Mr. and Mrs. Client, I'd be remiss to not at least ask you this, okay, but on a scale of one to 10, one being I hate helping people, I also hate making money, they generally laugh at that, okay, 10 being if I could make a few thousand bucks a month on the side helping people doing this, I'd be interested in learning more. Based on what you've seen so far, where do you put yourself on that scale? Okay, and here's how I look at it. If they're five or less, you say, great, no problem, I appreciate your answer. And you don't talk to them about recruiting anymore. If they're six, seven, eight, 
okay? I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, Shane, listen, when I come back, I'd like to explore that a little bit more with you because you know, there might be a potential opportunity to, to make some pretty good side income, maybe even leave your job. I know you told me earlier that you were thrilled with that. There, there could be an option for you there, so I'd love to chat with you a little bit. So I'm building a little bit of suspense. If they're eight, nine, 10, I'm gonna say, Shane, what do you like most about what you saw tonight? And I just let the client start selling himself. Right, well, I really like that, I really like it. Well, great, tell me more about what you liked about it. Well, what do you see yourself maybe being able to do with this that you couldn't do at your job? Why are you so interested in that? Do you have any other questions? And they'll recruit themselves, right, okay? The right people, two out of 10, will straight up recruit themselves. If you allow that conversation to happen, right, okay? A lot of you are trying to, you're trying to convince a three to be a 10, right? They're, a three is never going to be a 10, folks. Right? You're trying to get an oak, a, a rose bush to turn into an oak, right? <coughs> it's, it, that one's a rose bush. Just leave the thorny sucker alone, right? Okay. <laughs> and go find somebody that wants to do something with themselves, right? Okay, so if a nine or 10 recruit now, if less than five, don't talk about recruiting at the FNA, and then you post close again. Okay, so at this point, you've taken the life app. You said, right, so you packed up your stuff before you left, you listened to that, I'd be remiss to not at least ask you, you put the recruiting question there. Okay, if nine or 10, sit there and have the conversation, try to take the IBA. If less than that, right, six, seven, eight, foreshadow for the next appointment. Lynette, when we get back together, we're gonna to talk a little bit about that because A, B, and C. If there are five, say, hey, great, thank you for being so honest with me, we definitely won't talk about that any further on the next appointment, okay? So I'm packing up my stuff and then I'm post-closing again. Okay, so I'm basically saying here, Don, listen, again, this is going to be so, so great, but you're going to make such a big difference for your financial future. I mean, you're really doing one of the smartest things anybody could ever do, which is getting a great plan that you're going to be able to follow. It's just going to put you so far ahead, right? You feel good about that? Good, because I feel really great about what we're going to do for you. And I'm just putting them at ease and reassuring them of their decision, right? Do you ever notice people don't like making decisions? Okay, most employees are told what to do all the time. They have surrendered their decision-making power, right? Okay, they're so unused to it that if you ask them to make a choice, they're always gonna be wondering and second-guessing, am I making the right choice? What's the wrong thing, right? I sat down with this guy yesterday, God bless his heart, nicest guy in the world, going through a bankruptcy, okay? Has no money, right? Has no use of credit cards, because the lawyers won't let him use it. Has no bank accounts, operating in complete cash, and he's like asking like, how, now, how would I get out of this if I want to get, like, making sure nobody's trying to screw him. And I'm, I told him, I'm like, he's like, so what do you think about this? I'm like, honestly, dude, broken skeptical is a bad combination, man, right? Like, if we were trying to screw you, I'd find somebody with more money than you. <laughs> <laughs> You're not my ideal candidate to take advantage of. You don't have it. <laughs> but, but you just got to understand that's how people think. People, people automatically turn to the negative because that's where they came from. Okay, So let's go ahead and go through because we do have about five minutes. I'm going to try to do it in seven minutes. Okay, So so here's Leonard and Catania. They're my couple. I sat down with them and I say, Leonard and Catania, thanks so much for getting together. Like I told you on the phone, I wanted to show you a little bit about what we're doing. Okay, And so, uh, so I've already formed them, right? I'm now sitting, I've moved into the, into the kitchen table conversation. So, you know, I'd love to tell you a little bit about what we're doing, how we're helping people. Is it all right if I take just a couple minutes and share with you what we're doing? Awesome, great. So the company I work with is a company called Primerica. Uh, you, know, you may or may not have heard of Primerica. You know much about our company? Okay, and that's pretty normal. Most people haven't heard of us because we don't advertise. You would have had to have known somebody that worked with us, okay? But you probably heard of a company called Citigroup before, Citibank, City Mortgage, okay? For 20 years, we were Citi's advisors, okay? And so we, we spun off, we went public in 2010, we're a standalone company. But you know, that's totally normal that you haven't heard of us. So at Primerica, guys, we have two jobs, okay? One job is we help to educate families on how money works. And so, like you can see here, basically what we do is we teach them some concepts that help them to pay less for taxes, pay less for debt, pay less for insurance, and actually help them to take some of that savings that we freed up and actually save for things like retirement, kids college education, starting a business, I mean, all very important things, right? Okay, we actually have 50,000 families a month right now, guys, 
switch their finances to us. It's a huge, huge company. And we accomplished this, guys, through something called a financial needs analysis. We call it an f &A. And the best way to think about the financial needs analysis is basically it's a written plan that shows people where they are, helps them to figure out where they want to be, and then teaches them to go from point A to point B with the money they already have, just maybe using it a little more efficiently. Does that make sense to you guys? The best way to think about it is kind of like a GPS. So if you guys were gonna take a road trip from here to LA, you would probably put it in a GPS, right, on your phone. Or if you're old school, you'd at least take a Rand McNally, but you probably wouldn't just drive west, right? Okay, why wouldn't you just drive west? Yeah, you might get there, but you're probably gonna get detoured, it's gonna take a long time. And so most people, when it comes to a road trip, will have a plan, right? That makes sense. But ironically, most people don't apply that same logic to their finances, right? They don't have a plan. They're just kind of doing the best they can with what they got, right? They got a 401k, they got some insurance, good work. And they're just trying to do the best they can, right? So obviously, if you could have a plan when it came to your finance, having a plan would be better than not having a plan, right? You agree with that, great. So out of curiosity, guys, do you have a written plan that has these sorts of things written down? Are you just, like most people, really just doing the best you can with what you have? Okay, yeah, absolutely. And that's most people, so I don't want you to feel bad about that, but what I do wanna do is I would like to set a time to come back and I wanna put a plan together for you. It's gonna show you all those things. Now, the average financial planner charges about $1,000 to, to do a financial plan that makes specific recommendations charge a price nobody bickers about we charge free okay so because we charge free I'm gonna ask you guys for two things in return okay the first thing that I'm gonna ask is that when I come back and I put this plan together and you can look at me across your kitchen table and you can say Ian this was really great this was absolutely a great experience I'm gonna ask that you guys would be willing and able to refer me to five or ten people that are married have kids have a home and have a job, okay, that might benefit from some of the same free financial information that you found valuable. Would that be fair? Okay, great. Now, listen, when I come back, you're like, hey, Ian, you know what? I already knew all this. It's, you know, you were really pushy, your breath smelled bad, whatever. If it wasn't a great experience, I wouldn't expect those referrals. Is that fair? Great. Okay, so the second thing that I'm gonna ask guys is listen, when I come back, and I put together a plan that does get you out of debt faster, it does help you better insure your family, it does help you save more, or at minimum, more efficiently than you're saving now, and it costs you the same or less per month than you're paying to do these things right now, I'm gonna ask that you would move forward with the recommendations that I'm making to you, okay? Is that fair? Now listen, when I come back, if it's not better, it's more expensive, it doesn't make any sense, I would not ask you to move forward with anything. Is that fair? Great. So what I'd like to do is, you've got your calendars on you, right? Let's go ahead and set up a time for, it's, it's Tuesday now, maybe Thursday of this week. How's Thursday look? Great, I set a time with it, right? Okay, and then I, I say, listen, I'm, I'm really excited that we're gonna do this. It's gonna help you so much. It's gonna put you so much further ahead than a lot of your family, a lot of your friends that aren't gonna take the time to get a plan, right? Okay. By, by not having a plan, right? See, we don't we don't fail a plan, we, we plan to fail, right? We don't have a plan in place, so we're gonna be really set up way, way ahead. So listen, what you're gonna need, I'm gonna need statements for debts, like mortgage, credit cards, cars, anything like that, statements for any insurances you have, auto, home, health insurance, okay? And then statements for like savings accounts, investments, 401k, so I'm gonna need you to to pull that all together. But a couple of things that I'd like to grab tonight or at least take a look at tonight so I can prepare a little bit for when I come back. Number one is any retirement accounts that you have, like 401Ks, old 401Ks, IRAs, anything like that. Do you guys have anything like that that's out there? Okay, great, current employer or former one? Former. Okay, great, so what I'm gonna do is before I leave tonight, I'm gonna grab those statements because I wanna do a little research. And then the other thing that I want to take a look at tonight before we leave is your life insurance. So who does your life insurance for you right now? And then they're going to be in one of the five, right? Okay. And I'm just going to straight up go through that conversation. Great. So they got group insurance. I do the group presentation. 
the two questions, a diagram, close the life app. So we're closing it up. I'm saying reminding everyone, okay, so we got Thursday at seven, right? So listen, guys, before I leave tonight, I, I'd be remiss to not at least ask you, okay? But on a scale one to 10, one being, okay, uh, you know, I, I'm not interested in helping people or making money, okay? 10 being, gosh, if I could make an extra thousand or 2,000 a month on the side, you know, I'd be really interested in learning more. Based on what you've seen so far, where do you rate yourself on that scale of one to 10? Okay, and so, uh, and so I follow it. Five or less, say great. Listen, thanks for being honest with me. I appreciate that. We won't talk any further when we get back together. Okay, the second thing that, uh, that they're gonna say is, you know, seven, eight, eight, nine, right? If it's seven, eight, I'll say great. When we get back together, I'd love to talk with you a little more about that. Do me a favor, guys. If you could, if you have questions about how that might work, what it might look like for you, write it down so that when we get back together, we can answer it for you. If there are nine or 10, I say, great. So Leonard, what did you like the most about what you saw? How do you feel like it could be a fit? I close it up, okay? And then I say, hey guys, listen, again, I'm really looking forward to Thursday at seven. You guys are making a great decision. I'm glad we've gone forward with getting your insurance started. You're making a great choice. You're gonna be so far ahead of everybody else. I'll see you Thursday at seven, great? Awesome. Hey, it was really nice meeting you guys. I'll see you then. How long did that take? Seven, eight minutes, right? Six fifty. Okay. Right? Do you see? Now listen, I haven't done a KT in years. But do you see how good I can still do this? Yeah. Right? Like I, I trip over myself every once in a while, but I haven't done it for years. But that's how many of them I've done. So you learn that process, you're gonna have a lot of success at the kitchen table. All right, guys, have a great one.